Hey, it's uh, yeah, victory, victory is our cry. Okay, guys, I've spent the entire day organizing this information for you guys. The way I'm going to roll this out is I think it's really important for not just the people that come here, um, you know, but everybody for posterity's sake. Um, I think it's super important that I give a testimony of the other events like uh, Grand Junction and Chinati. So when I mention these things, I don't want people just to take me at my word. Oh, well, Click said it. So no, 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 no. I document all of it. Everything I document when it happens, the Lord told me to. He taught me to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll out um, some little clips for, remember I, I told everybody about the shipping containers. So what I'll do is I'll go show everybody. Well, the first really big, you know, event he had me do was the Grand Junction event. I mean, before that, there are many things he had me do, like going to This Is It and doing the radio program. But the, those are too many to talk about. We're going to talk about the events, like the Grand Junction event. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about Chinati. I'm going to play you video clips. I'm going to show you absolute proof of the miracles. The rocks in the creek, the setting up of the LZ in Chinati, the the flood that came and split in half, the building that was cut in half. I'm going to show you those things when I documented them. I have little video clips. And so I'm going to go through those and I'm going to set this thing up so you can see all these steps led to here. Here's the other thing I'm going to do for you. Some people are like, well, how, you know, how did you know that the Lord was telling you to, you know, go to Chinati or the Grand Junction stuff? I'm going to show you the way he communicates it to me. So you can decide for yourself. You can look at it and go, okay, that's just certifiably insane. There's just no way that can possibly happen. But yet it happens. And so I know it's him. There's just no way it could possibly manifest, you know, and, and I'll explain as I go along. So I'm just getting started and it's 9.09 and I've been working all day. And here's the other thing, just so you know. <laughs> Guys, I have a, a Toyota Tundra that is packed to the gills with a camper on top. And I mean, it, all my equipment, everything's there. It's not just sitting down and organizing a few pictures. The amount of work that's gone into this is staggering. So bear with me a little bit. I'm pretty whipped, but I have coffee and I'm going to be taking some breaks during this thing. And I, we're going to knock this testimony out because the Lord has communicated to me very clearly. The end of the world is here. It's coming quickly. I'll show you how he showed me so you know you'll know exactly what he's shown me so I can communicate it. And you decide for yourself what you think it all means. I already know. He's already shown me. Okay, so without too much, any more further ado, let's just kind of crank it up. And okay, the very first thing the Lord had me do, uh, you know, as far as an event was the Grand Junction event. And it started with a shipping container that the Lord had me he told me to buy a shipping container. And I thought, I thought, you know, am I just kind of hearing just, you know, what, why in the world would the Lord tell me to buy a shipping container? So I was in my house and Clay was working. He was, he was living in my house and um, he was editing videos for me. And Clay was sitting there working at his station and I was sitting there in the living room and I said, Lord, um, you know, this is really heavy. You're telling me to get a shipping container uh, and convert it. I mean, it's just really weird. And so I went out to the patio. I went out to my side patio and I had a uh, a red barbecue pit and I had some of these, uh, these uh, things that I was grinding to put on my artwork for locusts. I was adding to the locusts coming out of the pit. It was something else the Lord had told me to do. And I was like, I thought that was pretty weird. So I was using uh, these uh, service entry caps, which is what brings electricity into a house. All houses have service entry caps. And it's kind of interesting that a service entry cap is what receives the electricity. The, you know, think of it as energy. So anyway, so I was working on that. I came inside and I said right in front of Clay, I said, 
Lord, if you really want me to get a shipping container, would you please make it totally obvious right then? I said it out loud in front of Clay. Right then a commercial comes on and this guy goes, we can deliver a shipping container right to your home or office. Just call. Do, do, do. Uh, <laughs> and I was just like, are you kidding me? I just said, if you really want me to get one, please make it totally obvious. So when the commercial instantly came on and the guy goes, we can deliver one right to your home or office. Well, then I began, I went online, started looking who sells shipping container. I had to research it and found Go Containers out of Houston. Tim sold me my first shipping container. So I got it to the house, we put it in, and then the Lord gave me instructions on what to put on it, what, like what to put on the shipping container, how to do it. And everything that he told me to put in there ended up being so supernatural. It was, it was crazy. I mean, it was literally crazy. There was a table. You'll get to see images of this. There was a table. He told me to build a table base, have the Lord's Prayer in Hebrew, in Hebrew, and I had it laser cut from around the table. He told me to put an octagon on it, put an octagon on it and then for a tabletop and then to do what I do with my artwork, light it from inside. And I did. And when I did the Lord, these two lights started changing colors. They, you know, they're these LED lights and they started the exact same color, but they're off like by, you know, maybe a millisecond each. And after 30 minutes of being on, even though they start on the same color, the color scheme gets off and it turned the Lord's prayer to a rainbow that was lit from the inside coming out. It was unbelievable. Then the Lord tells me to go light a fire. He said, go light a fire on the weather had gotten cool. And he said, now go light a fire. And I, I was like, you want me to light a fire? I lit a fire and then he told me to go look in the shipping container and when I went and looked in the shipping container, because he had told me to put in this glass door, the Bible, literally, and the table that the Bible was on, it looked like literally fire coming out of the Bible. You'll see these pictures. So anyway, that stuff is in here. I'm going to show you that kind of, that stuff. I'm going to touch on it, but I'm not going to spend a lot of time. I'm just going to document it and say, here it is. This is what happened. And then I'm going to move on to the, you know, the Grand Junction event very briefly. Then I'm going to move on to the Chinati event. And you're going to watch the little video clips. And then we're going to move into what happened here. Because this is the culmination of all of it. It was all leading up to this. And so, you know, it's super important, I think. Okay, so let's do it. Y'all ready? <laughs> okay, Jesus, thank you. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, now keep an eye on this thing. All right, here we go. All right. It's a little toasty. A little roasty in here. You know what? Give me one sec, folks. I'm going to try and get some air going. Okay, so let me just kind of see where I'm at on my setup here. Let's remember the past. Okay, let's see. Okay, so... Let me just look at my folder real quick because there's a whole lot of stuff that we're going to touch on. And there's these. Let's see if the fire thing got in there. Okay, hang on one sec. Uh, all right, folks, so here we go. So I had a little glitch. Um, I opened the folder and some stuff was missing. So I had to re re redo it. So here we go. Uh, all right, <laughs> All right, we're going to start with this first shipping container. The Lord told me to put everything you see that's on the walls. Every single thing was supernaturally confirmed by the Lord in a way that was impossible. And the Statue of Liberty, uh, uh, even the Statue of Liberty, while I was working on it, while I was grinding the metal in my driveway, this giant locust landed on it. I've got it is an image I'll make sure it's in the folder but anyway we're gonna watch a slideshow right now of the first shipping container and the production of it and the second container may be in here let me just scan real quick and you'll see all the stuff I was talking about the Lord orchestrated everything that's in this container himself he and the best way to say this is honestly he literally did it 
through me. He showed me what to do, and he just had it made sure everything that was in there was supposed to be in there. And it was a message. And during that time, he conveyed so much supernatural data to me. It's just not even arguable. So let's start with this shipping container, and then I'll go into some pics. All right, let's go. One thing I think would be really smart for me to do is to tell you what it is. That right there, I the Lord, I heard the Lord tell me, I want you to make, let's see, where'd this thing go? Okay. He told me to do concentric circles, making a dimension, like uh, going into a dimension and to put the QRST complex. I don't know if you know what that is. That's a, like when someone's getting an EKG. <laughs> That's the QR, it's called the QRST complex, and it's the heartbeat of life. It's literally the, the, the signal of life. And he told me, put it in the center of the thing. When I put that thing up, I'm going to give you a quick testimony. When I put that thing up, I said, Lord, you know, I, I hope I got all this right. And I had put this glue behind it to, to hold these panels to the wall. And I put these big magnets that suck these metal sheets to the wall. And when I went to go take the, the magnet off, some of the glue had caught on it and I was pulling and I was on a bench and that thing came loose and it cut me through the lip. I had to go get stitches. And when I went over to the, the little minor emergency clinic to get my lip sewed up, I mean, I got hit in the face with a solid 250 pound magnet. And this thing just went right through my lip. And when I went to go get stitches, while I was there, I asked the doctor, I was like, hey, my ankle's been bothering me as long as I'm sitting here paying this bill. He goes, well, let me have a look at it. God is my witness. He hands me a pamphlet and it has a straight line on it and a guy running like, you know, an athlete running and he's running right into a QRST complex, which is what I was working on when I said, Lord, I hope I got all this right. I'm not joking. I was like, well, I took a, a shot in the lip to get the message, but I got the message anyway, because it represents that's that that spark of life that runs us, that spark of holiness, it's going to leave through a dimension at some point. And that that point's coming. So anyway, that's that's what this is. And you'll see some still photos of this as we go further into this. Okay, here we go. Uh, on the other walls is this. Uh, let me just tell you what the walls are. One wall is this. He told me on one wall, put the Statue of Liberty being covered by a tidal wave. I already had an image of the Statue of Liberty I was going to cut out. And then when I went to the metal shop, when I went to the metal shop to go get it cut out, this guy named Roman says, he goes, he pulls up images of black and white Statues of Liberty. And he goes, you know, this would be easier to cut out. And it was from the waist up. And I heard the Lord's, and I had already gotten my artwork together. And I heard the Lord tell me, switch to that. And I was like, you want me to switch to that one that Roman is showing me? And I heard the Lord say, yes. Right when I left m, &M Metals, I went over to the bank, Frost Bank. And in Frost Bank, on the wall, was an old $10 bill. It's like a $10 note from Texas. And on it was a woman with water up to her chest in the ocean, just like the Statue of Liberty. I was like, you couldn't even think this stuff up. So every single thing on these walls was confirmed. The Statue of Liberty is being covered by a tidal wave. The wall neck on the same exact wall, but the next panel is a fire, just a raging fire covering everything. And then on the other wall is the, the QRST complex leaving, like the heart, the spark of life leaving through a dimension. And then on the front part is the tree of life. And literally when that thing lit up, it you could see the energy coursing through the tree and going out to the limbs. I mean, it just... I was like, what the hell is going on? Yeah, so I got to be the Lord's artist. I'm, I'm God's answer to Michelangelo because he works for the enemy. Anyway, but, you know, Michael, you know, whatever. <laughs> of course, he's way not as good as me, but anyway. Here we go. Let's go. Let's do this. Okay. Let's try this.
I think we may have had a little audio glitch, so I'm going to stop it real quick. Again, what's on the tabletop is the name Yahweh. It's an octagon, very specific instructions. That what I, that's what I was told to do. And he told me literally exactly how to grind it. And it makes a magnetic feel that you would see coming out of something spherical. Anyway, so just FYI, that's what's on the tabletop. The sides of the table is the Lord's Prayer in Hebrew. It makes a rainbow. Okay, sorry, that now I've done all that stuff. Here we go. Jeremiah 51, 42. I believe it's the waves have come up over Babylon. He told me what scripture to put on that wall. I believe it was Jeremiah 51, 42. He told me to put a chessboard in there. He told me to put an hourglass on the chessboard. That's the other thing. As I see new things or as I see the things, I'll stop and comment on them. A chessboard, he told me to put an hourglass on it. Okay, try and wrap your brain around what you're looking at. Do you see the fire that looks like it's coming out of the name Yahweh? I just about freaked out when I was like, where? The Lord told me, I want you to light a fire tonight. And I was like, you want me to light a fire? I have a little fire pit on my side patio. And I heard the Lord tell me tonight, I want you to light a fire. And I was like, okay. And so I started a fire, and the fire got going. I was like, oh, that's nice and toasty. And then I heard the Lord tell me, now go photograph your shipping container you did. And when I walked up there, I looked through the door, and I was like, what the heck's going on? <laughs> I was like, what's going on? The the table's on fire. What? The, and I was like, what the heck's going on? And it it was coming out of the table, out of the name Yahweh, and it looked like it was coming right out of the Bible itself. It was insane. Guys, do y'all know how many miracles I've seen? That's one of the gifts I operate in. Did you know the gift of miracles is a spiritual gift? I've done, I've seen, I've seen so many miracles. I've seen 
probably over a thousand miracles since I got saved. I and I'm required to tell 100% truth. I've seen so many miracles I can't even keep track of them. Anyway, praise God, all glory to God. But it comes with a price. Here's something else I want to mention. Can you imagine that that table, that that what's in that container, the the Lord's prayer prayer turns to a rainbow. Can you believe it ended up at Rainbow Avenue? That table was done way before uh, any of that stuff happened. Where I was going to have to get get the container out of there because I was worried that. You know, family members of mine that are on the other team would try and seize whatever's there and say it was there. I even asked my sister and brother, I said, do y'all think you have some right to my shipping container? They wouldn't even answer the question. I was like, why don't you just answer the question? It's my shipping container. Do you think because it's on the property you should have it or something? And they, and here's another thing I want to make very clear. A lot of people back then were saying, oh, Clegg, man, he's just bilking people for money. I gave them both away. I gave them away. After putting so much work into them, it was absurd. And then the Lord told me, ship them off. And that's what I did. And they're still in Grand Junction. That's where the Lord wants them. They don't belong to me. They belong to the Lord. And a lot of people were, oh, Clegg's just trying to use your money to make what he wants. Cause it's a... Why would I give them away? I don't even get to see them. They're in Grand Junction. Anyway, there you go, all you naysayers. All right, check it out. Check this out. Look at this. Let me show you something. Look at the Lord's Prayer right here. Look right here. That's the Lord's Prayer. It's a rainbow. Look at the fire coming out of the octagon, the Word of God. I mean, I, I don't know if you guys understand just how supernatural all this is. Look at the fire coming out of the table. That is, that is a reflection from the fire that he had me start. We're just getting started tonight. And let me tell you something. What happened here in Kill Devil Hills makes all that look like kid stuff. This You're not even going to believe what happened here. There we go. I'm going to pause that. That's that's the alley where I got saved. When I walked out of the alley the night I got saved, that cross, that stained glass window was all lit up and it shows Adam and he's looking up and Chris, so it's Adam and then he's looking up and Christ is ascending into heaven. So it's from Adam to the ascension. Just stop and think about that. The night I got saved. When I exited the alley, when Michael told me, you should go get some water. You look like you need some water. Go to the bus station. I was just like, I will go to the bus station and get some water. Beep, beep, beep. Yep. And so when I walked out of that alley, that's what that's what I was looking at. That and underneath that, carved into the rock wall, it said, it had a guy scattering seed. It said, whatsoever man soweth, that must he also reap. Do you think any of this is possible that I've shown you so far? The answer is not, not in a million years. We're just getting started. We're just getting started. Here we go. That's clay. That's my computer room.
I'm going to pause it there because I want to comment on these things. You see that fire pit? That's the fire the Lord told me to make. He said, I want you to make a fire. And I was like, okay, that's kind of interesting. You want me to make a fire right now? Make a fire. And so I was like, all right. So I did it. And because I was obedient, I got to see the miracle with the flames coming out of the word of God and off the top of the table because he knew it would make that reflection. He knew it. And that's why he had me do it. See that fire? That's what's reflecting off that tabletop. pause it for a moment there that's life and death it says the gift the the gift of god is eternal the free gift of god is eternal life and if you turn that over it says the wages of sin or death they're right above a mirror and i and this was before i knew all the duality stuff i mean this has been a work in progress what you're seeing now are miracles hindsight is 2020 to be able to see this right now, to me, is just like, I've been living the greatest miracle on this earth, man. Look at that. Life and death. Mirrors. And did you know he told me to do the back wall and mirrors? And I was like, wow. And I checked on getting it done in, in a construction way. And one day he told me to walk into some furniture store. And I walked in and those two mirrors were 200 and something dollars. I was like, What? And the Lord told me, get those and put them in the container. Yeah, unbelievable.
so now we'll go over here. There's the stack. Okay, so I'm going to pause that for a sec. So now, remember, the Lord let me decrypt the U.S. currency as well. You're looking and you're talking to the person that the Lord God showed the hidden imagery on the U.S. currency. Nobody else. The Twin Towers had been revealed. Some Somehow the Twin Towers was out in the public domain. The Pentagon, the federal building bombing, uh, the federal building bombing blown in half, the $10 bill, the tidal wave coming over the $10 bill, the $100 bill with the bell on it, uh, the whole thing being nuked, New York being nuked and water going through between the buildings. All of that was revealed to the person that's speaking to you. All of it. Nobody else. Anybody else that says that, that was revealed to them is lying. I'm looking you in the eye. I had, a, I had that out in 2000. In three with the Pentagon and the federal building bombing and then after that after I had sh I was shown the Twin Tower bombing that was shown to me and after that was shown to me the Lord showed me the to the way to understand what it was and then he showed me the Pentagon the federal building bombing the federal building bombing blown in half he showed me the $50 bills the Hoover Dam that's gonna happen and he showed me the three layers of ink it's on YouTube go type in $100 bill nuclear devastation, the Jonathan Kleck. Just go watch it. Go type in the Jonathan Kleck. What are the odds of all of this? Just go watch those. Okay, we're not going to do all that. We're just going to do all these event things. Okay, that was one shipping container. Okay, let's see where we're at now. Uh, so, very quickly, let me, before... Before all that, this is this is yours truly. That's Jonathan, the artist, sitting on top of a table that's got four different colored skulls, one in each corner. I did not name my artwork. A lot of artists always name their pieces, not me. But I named that table the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. And it had four different colored skulls on it. I still have it. The whole thing is made of marbles, the flat marbles that they put in like floral arrangements, the entire thing. It's because I'm the guy bearing witness to the four horsemen of the apocalypse that are coming immediately. It's, it's about to happen. Oh, look at this artwork. Just look at what you're looking at here. This is me before I got converted. And then he used my skill set he used my skill set to produce the shipping containers and those things. And those and the way what he did was he used his communication on me manifesting into this physical dimension what would come to pass. That's why on my birthday when he had me ring the bell, he made sure I rang it exactly at 226. Alatheo, and it means to truth, literally to speak truth in reality into this dimension. I'm the guy. Absolutely. Okay, let's see. Let me just do a quick scan of anything else. Let me do this. I know Dave probably added some more pics. Let's see. Uh, let me do the next. There's a whole bunch of stuff. Okay, like that. This is a great pick. That's when I. That's when I was. That's a raw shipping container. That's before I did anything to it, and that's the table before I did any grinding on it. There's the Lord's Prayer changing colors, and this this line it it would be like a lightning bolt going down it all the time. It looked like a lightning bolt. It was crazy. I was like, that is absolutely insane. So let me ask you this question: If someone was doing this for their own you know, hey, I'm gonna, hey, y'all help the ministry, and you're overdoing all this kind of stuff, and you're just kind of making your pad really cool. Why would you give it all away? I gave it all away, all of it, just so you know. That way, anyone that tries to berate me or belittle me, you can say, well, Cleck gives it all away. I give it away. I do it. I get the message and I pass it on. I do whatever he tells me to do with it. 
And if he tells me to leave it there, it stays there. If he tells me, no, the other, they both go to Grand Junction, they both go to Grand Junction. If he tells me, spend the money I gave you to make sure they get to Grand Junction, I do exactly what he says. Okay, let me show you. Uh, let me show you a couple little uh, pictures that should be in there now. Let's see real quick. So let me show you leading up to me getting saved in the alley. This was, okay, you just saw the, the old Johnny right there. Let's see if this will go to the next picture. There should be a... There should have been a button right there just to go to the next one. That was uh, when I was with Lou and I we got we ended up getting married and we had our child together, our son Trinity. That was back in the day before Johnny got older. <laughs> That's Johnny the artist. That's Johnny the vampire skydiving with Lou in Titusville. Um, this is the alley where I got saved right here. Those are the steps I came down. That's when I took the step of faith. Up here is the door that I, I prayed in front of the door. I knew I was going to get killed if I walked out it. And if I came out in this alley and the guys that had been in the high speed chase with me, if they caught me in that alley, they probably would have killed me. And I, I, I was willing to, I was willing to do that. I was willing to die just to know the truth. Okay. So. All right, let's move on. Let me show you one really clear, amazingly beautiful picture. Let's see, right here should be it. There's the Lord's Prayer. You can see it's a rainbow. Can you imagine that ended up at Rainbow Avenue? I mean, Rainbow Drive in Grand Junction. A, the Lord's Prayer in a rainbow, in a shipping container that represents the Bride of Christ went to Rainbow Avenue. By some bizarre set of circumstances. That's just not even possible. Okay. Anyway, let's keep going. Here we go. Okay, let me go back to my folder. Here we go. Let's see where we're at. Okay, so I've established one shipping container documentary. Okay, now, here's the next shipping container. Now, as one came in, another one got shipped out. Okay, so see this shipping container right here? This one, this one came out and got set on a truck see it right there so this one got set on a truck and it went to Grand Junction this one right here came in and took its place now I told you in my testimony I didn't know why the Lord had told me replace it I thought I was getting rid of the one I had worked on so it wouldn't be part of a property property dispute and it wouldn't get taken or seized by my brother and sister and so the Lord said, I want one in its place. I had no idea he was going to have me convert that one as well. He had me convert that one, and it represents the judgment seat of Christ. Now, I told you that one, I had gone down, I, you know, I did all the artwork on the, all four, on the, on the walls, just like the other one, and I hadn't heard from the Lord. Uh, uh, he told me what to do, and I knew what to do, but I hadn't heard from him every step of the way like I did on the first one. So I just went at it. I just went and did the walls just like I, he had told me. And I'm like, hey, man, you know, I haven't heard from you like I did on the last shipping container. Every single wall, even if I had to get a big cut in my lip just to know I got it right, you made sure I knew I got it right. And I'm like, so I really need to know. And he told me, I want you to put an empty grave. I was like, you want me to put what? And so I said, make the shape of a coffin and, and go around it and show an empty grave the three car crosses at calvary um he gave me some scriptures to put in it like cut out of metal and then he had me uh do two two sperm going through a dimension and i was like into a set of twins and i was like what this is before i knew all the twin stuff i was like what you want me to do what you're going to see, okay, so I'd already done all the artwork, and I was like, I was really concerned. I was like, that, that was some pretty weird stuff to put on the walls. And I didn't know everything I know now, you know, all the twin stuff. I didn't even know it all. And, and, and so I did what he said, but I was really concerned because I was like, well, 
you know, I got to give a testimony to this. And I heard the Lord tell me, go down to the alley. I'll talk to you in the morning. I'll show you. And I was like, oh, and I was all excited. So the next morning I went down to the alley and I was sitting there like, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Hey, woo. nothing crickets. I was like, okay, what's going on, man? I mean, you know, I'm here, you know, shouldn't you be telling me what I'm going to freak out of my mind? I mean, what do I tell everybody on YouTube? I mean, what do I do? I mean, I got to tell the truth. And so I was like, okay, great. Okay, that's great. Okay, you know, man, I'm going to go home. And I was going to go home down Broadway, get on Highway 281 and go. But instead of taking a left turn, I just went straight down Broadway because it was Sunday morning. There's no traffic. And so I went down Broadway. I got to Incarnate Word College and there was, I was you know, and I was sitting there going, hey, you're, this is going to mess up my faith. This is really going to mess me up. And I'm driving down the street and I, it looks like a bird's wing sticking out of, of the street, like a dove had been run over. And I, I saw it and I, I was like, that looks like a dead dove. And as I got closer, I'm like, that's some kind of a book. And my truck went right over the top of it, right under the center of my truck. And then I saw it in the rearview mirror, and I'm looking in the rearview mirror, and I hear the Lord say, go get it. And I'm like, and I said out loud, I said, you want me to go get it? What if nothing's in it? I'm going to freak out, man. <laughs> and I heard the Lord say, go get it. And I said, well, and I started kind of, well, boo, boo, and I heard, go get it now. And I'm like, ah, uh, and I make a U, and I go back to get it. I did a little video. Let's watch that video. Here we go. Let's see. Here it is. Here's the video of that day. This is a video of that day. So here we go. Documented it. Document, document everything. Here we go. I was driving down Broadway. I was coming from this direction, going this direction. And as I drove by, there was a piece of paper in the street, and I heard the Lord tell me to turn around. So I went to that light up there. I went around that place, and I came out this way, and I turned around. And I'm walking out to pick this. Okay. Can you imagine that you're me? Just try to imagine you or me. You went down to the alley. The Lord told you. He would tell you that what you put in the shipping container was what he wanted. You went. To, I went down to the alley where I got saved. That's where I go to pray sometimes because I feel very close to the Lord there. That's where I was born again. And that's when, And so nothing happened. And so when I saw that thing in the street, and he told me to go pick it up. I was like, what? Go pick up some chunk of paper in the street? Everything in that little, but you, you know what it says on the cover of it? The tomb is empty. It says the tomb is empty. He told me to put an empty tomb in the shipping container. <laughs> I mean, there's a, you'll see the walls of the shipping container. I was like, and then he had the, and he told me put a, I had this big leather chair. He told me to put lambskins on it and put the table in front of it with the Bible, the representing the judgment seat of Christ. I'm like, and the whole floor is metallic epoxy, looks like red blood cells. And I'm like, everything that's in that little pamphlet, for the most part, almost every single thing that's in that shipping container number two was in that little pamphlet. That identical little pamphlet was in my P.O. box Monday morning. I mean, the same exact one. The same exact pamphlet. When I opened my, my mail and I'm like, <laughs> it's just like, Ugh. you don't want to be on the wrong side of the Lord God. You do not want to be on the wrong side of him. I'm telling you. I'd rather have Satan come at me with every demon he's got than to be on the wrong side of the Lord God. Okay, here we go. Watch this. There's the pamphlet. Up, and I picked it up. Let me show you what it says. And I just finished the container. It says the empty tomb. Let me tell you something. That's what's in the shipping container. I mean, look at this. Is, I'm documenting this. This is today. Driving down Broadway, I went to the alley where I got saved to pray. And then I came down the street. After praying in the alley, I came down here. This is the way I wanted to go home, down Broadway. And I saw this paper in the street, and I heard the Lord tell me, I want you to turn around and go pick up that piece of paper. The Empty Tomb. It's a little Bible. It's a Bible track. It says The Empty Tomb. Did y'all know that's what's in that container I finished last night? 
she can't even think this stuff out. This is so wild. I think we're about to go home, folks. All right. Hmm, that's weird. I'm not sure what happened there. Uh, let's see. I was trying to show you this, and I think the the program stopped for just a moment. Let me um, let me just go back to where I was very quickly. Okay, I'm gonna show it. I'm gonna show this to you this way. I'm gonna take my cell phone and just play a little clip from it so you can see it. This is shipping container number two. So there's these two different sperm going through a dimension. It's three dimensional. And they go into there and then they come out on the other side. And I have all the magnets over there that would hold up the set of twins. The twins hadn't been added yet. That's in progress. So they go in one side and they come out the other side right there. And where all those magnets are is where the twins go. Gonna pop gonna play this one for you again real quick just so you can see. So that there the set of twins are. One's the devil, one's not. There's the life and the wages of sin is death. There's a set of twins that the sperm came out of that dimension and formed you can see this twin has devil horns and then the other one's upside down. I'm pointing to the devil horns on it. That's the face. That's the back. Legs. So there's a set of twins because the two different sperms have gone through a dimension and formed a set of twins in a different dimension, which is where we're at. This is so profound. I almost can't believe I did this. I am I literally almost cannot believe that the Lord God let me do this. It's unbelievable. I'm just going to let this play for a minute. I, I don't even know where this goes. See how they come out of that dimension? Look how 3D everything is. I mean, would you give these shipping containers away if you did them? Be honest, would you? I do exactly what he tells me to do. If he tells me to give them away, I give them away. The wages of sin is death. Okay, here's the other wall. So there's the empty, there's the empty grave. Watch. See? Uh, the way I did it, it makes it look 3D like it's sunken way down. I'm very close to the subject matter, though. It needs to get, the camera should go further away from it. Might have to. Uh, but you can see that's the shape of a coffin. See it? And it's empty. Can you imagine picking up that little pamphlet after doing all this and it says the tomb is empty? And then the, this next wall shows the three crosses of Calvary. Let's see if I go there. That's life on that wall. So death on one wall, the wages of sin is death, and it's the twin system. On the other wall, it's the free gift of God is eternal life. On the other wall, you just turn that word death upside down, and it spells life, life and death. And then there's the three crosses of Calvary I did on that wall. See them? And then I made it to where there, the blood runs from all three down to the floor and runs from all three down to the floor and the floor is blood red. Looks like blood. The whole floor on that thing looks like blood. Let's see. There you go. So after doing all that artwork, I gave it all away. That's right. Okay. Now, I just proved that I did the Grand Junction event. I skydived there. There was a get-together. It rained on everybody. People were asking me to baptize them. I said I just couldn't do it. You know, I just didn't have the capability of starting to baptize everybody. I had too many other things going on I had to, you know, deal with. And um, 
the Lord sent a rain shower over the group and it rained in the yard where everybody was and it wasn't raining on the street. It, it showered on everybody, but then at a certain point, that it was a very isolated small shower just over the group of people. Then after, uh, you know, it rained on everybody, it moved off and it was gone and the sun was out. I mean, it was unbelievable. It's a miracle. It baptized everybody. The Lord baptized everybody at that event. It was unbelievable. Okay, these are facts. I'm showing you facts. I just showed you fact. I just showed you facts. Okay, let's look at the next fact. Okay, now this is getting ready for Chinati. Now, this is really weird. What you're going to see right now is a little video clip where I got my trailer to pull my Royal Enfield. The Lord told me, I want you to, I didn't, guys, I'll look at you. I didn't, I didn't want a motorcycle. I've had GSXR 1100s. I've wrecked two of them. Uh, you know, it wasn't, they weren't my fault. Uh, uh, the, well, one of them, one of them that I high sided was my fault on a railroad track, but the lady that I hit in a car, it was all her fault. Um, anyway, so I didn't really want a motorcycle, you know, and the Lord told me, I want you to get this Royal Enfield. I had stopped by the motorcycle shop. I, I, I know the guys over there and the Lord said, get the Royal Enfield. And I was like, really, you want me to get a motorcycle? And I, I'll look at you and I, I really didn't want to get a motorcycle, but I was like, okay, I'll, you know, whatever. It'd be cool to scoot around a little bit. So anyway, I did what he said. Let me show you the Royal Enfield. Here you go. It's right here in the folder. Here's the Royal Enfield. So that's the Royal Enfield right there. It says it's a crown Royal Enfield. And it's interesting. It has an X right on top in the middle, just like my parachute. It says Royal Enfield. It's there it is right there. Royal Enfield. Okay, so anyway, so that um, that's that's what the Lord told me to do. I want you to get a Royal Enfield. It's not my style of bike, by the way. It's not what. That's not my my. That's not my thing. Anyway, so. But then he told me to get a motorcycle trailer that. He he was sending me to the desert, and I was like. You're sending me to the desert to skydive in the desert. And I was like, well, can you help me like confirm that? So let me tell you how that happened. This old lady, I was close to my house and I was like, Lord, you want me to take an LZ, a, a drop zone, you know, wind blades. Uh, I had to get a big 20 by 20 tarp. Uh, the one that I used in uh, Grand Junction, I had to take that with me. It has a big red X on it. It's a 20 by 20 blue tarp. And then he told me, get the get wind blades for wind directionals. You know, the ones that I got for Grand Junction. He wants me to take those to the desert now. And I'm like, uh, what am I doing? I mean, I have no idea what I'm even doing. Obviously, I'm skydiving somewhere in the desert. And I said, you know, could you... Could you just show me you really want me to go to to Big Bend, like to Big Bend, this place called Chinati. And I and it, it was the weirdest thing in the world. I walked into the motorcycle shop and this old man named Steve goes, hey, have you ever been to Chinati? I'm like, uh, no. And uh, he goes, yeah, it's like a little oasis in the desert. I went there on a, on a motorcycle trip and I stayed for two years. They only have a couple cabins. I lived in a tent for two years. I'm like... Okay, that sounds kind of weird. <laughs> you know, and then I hear the Lord tell me, I want you to go there. I'm like, you want me to go to Chinati? For what? To skydive. And I'm like, okay, the Lord wants me to go to Chinati to skydive. I was like, okay. And so anyway, so how do you believe that? How do you, how do you, how do you end up like really getting yourself to go to the desert, take a motorcycle, take a drop zone and go skydive into the desert when there's no airplane, there's no way to skydive. You got to have a drop zone. To, you got to have a place that's got an airplane that, you know, it's like, it doesn't make any sense. And I said, Lord, could you just confirm, help me believe that this is what you really want me to do? So I was close to my house in my neighborhood and this old lady starts honking her horn at me. And I look over and I roll down my window and I say, yes, ma'am, can I help you? And she says, she, you know, she was old. She goes, could you please show me how to get to Fort Sam Houston? And I'm like, wow, she's way off. I mean, she's way off. 
And I'm like, uh, and they're, you know, she's in a very busy place. She's at highway, you know, highway 281 and, and they, it's very busy. And I, and I look at her and I, I just know she's never going to make it even if I try and tell her. So I just say, you know what, ma'am, just come in behind my vehicle, just pull behind my vehicle. I'll turn on my emergency lights and you just follow me. So I led this old lady all the way over to Fort Sam Houston. And I pull in a car wash. I go, there it is. And she's like, oh, thank you. And so she scoots off. Just checking my microphone. So she scoots off to Fort Sam Houston. And I, guys, I know San Antonio really well. I used to ride my bicycle. I used to train on bicycles. And so when you train on a bicycle and you ride the city, you know everything. And so I, I went up the street and I was going to go head back home. And all of a sudden, I looked up, and I'm like, where am I? I'm like, weird. And so then I, I said, well, you know what? I'll just take a ride, and I'll intersect the street called Ritterman Road. And so I'm like, I'll just go ride, and I'll hit Ritterman. So I hit Ritterman. I take a left on Ritterman. I start going up Ritterman Road, and I'm driving. Now, I'm going to set this up for you because now I'm going to show you proof of the video. So I'm driving up Ritterman Road, and I'm talking to the Lord out loud in my car, and I'm like, hey, so... You want me to take my wind blades, you know, the ones from Grand Junction. You want me to take my my whole drop zone uh, to the desert. You want me to go to the desert um, with my whole drop zone. Right then I get to the corner of Austin Highway and Ritterman Road when I'm talking about my drop zone. And I look over and there's these purple wind blades, you know, like a drop zone, sticking out of the asphalt. In Terrell Hills, you don't get to do that. You don't get to drive wind blades into the asphalt. The cops over there are not, in the city halls, they are not about that. And I looked over and I'm like, what the heck? That's weird. There's And, and I, so I'm saying, you want me to take my wind blades? Now I'm looking at two wind blades. And I hear the Lord say, go in there. <laughs> and I'm like, go in there go into that building i'm like you want me to go into that building i don't even know what it is go in and i'm like okay and it's it's an art gallery and i'm like okay and I've, i just asked you want me to take all my stuff to the desert to chinati which is in big men west texas go in there so i open the door and i peek my head in <laughs> And this guy sees me. He's like, can I help you? And I'm like, uh, yeah. I was just wondering. I, I've driven by many times. I've never been in. He goes, come on in. Yeah, come on in. He goes, my name's so-and-so. This is my art gallery. And I go, yeah, I used to have an art gallery on Broadway. And he goes, I specialize in artists that do West Texas landscapes like Big Bend what and i'm like what and the very first picture i look at on the wall his centerpiece you know in art galleries they usually have one piece that they want everyone to look at centerpiece and so i look over at it and it's it's a shepherd leading sheep through the desert in big bend and i look at it and he goes oh that's so and so and that's yeah that one's thirty five thousand. and i'm like oh it's a really nice painting and uh I walk up to and I hear the Lord I hear the Lord tell me photograph the artist. So it has a little plaque. This is a really expensive gold like gold leaf frame and stuff. And so I hear the Lord say photograph it. And so I I, I ask the guy, is it okay? Can I photograph it? And he goes, Yeah. And I photographed the painting and then I photographed the little nameplate, the artist nameplate. And it was Melvin Warren, I believe. Melvin Warren. And when I left, the Lord said, look up the name Melvin Warren. You know what Melvin Warren means? Chief Watchman. Yeah. <laughs> and I was just like, ah! and I'm like, oh my gosh, you're not kidding. I'm going to the desert. So yeah, now let me prove it to you. Watch. Here we go. So this is right here, the triumph that you're looking at. That's... I had gone over to the Triumph store to buy my trailer to take the motorcycle to the desert. And I took a picture of the Triumph way back then because I'm like, you know, we win over the devil. And I was like, that's kind of cool. And I put it in there. And now I'm driving a Triumph here at Kill Devil Hills. I wonder what the odds are. 
Here we go. Watch. Here we go. Ready? That's Grand Junction right there. That's my big blue LZ tarp. That's Michael who did the tandem. That's whose house the containers are at. By the way, Mike's got a series of supernatural things that happened, you know, that he did uh, in preparation for the containers, but he would have to tell you those. I just can't go into them because I couldn't get them right. What you're looking at right now, okay, let me take my, what you're looking at right now are the purple wind blades when I turn the corner, when I said, you want me to take my wind blades? And so here are the wind blades are. Now, the reason you're seeing the photograph is after I went in there and all this happened, he gave me his card and I went outside and I documented right then and there everything. I walked outside and I photographed the card in front of the wind blades. I was like, this is insane. So I document everything. Here's a miracle. Watch. This is the way the Lord got me to go to Chinati, right here, watch. Can you believe the name of the painting is Searching for Greener Pasture and it's a shepherd leading sheep in the desert? And I'm a watchman. I've been called as a watchman for this generation. And Melvin Warren means chief watchman. Now, don't forget, we're, we're going to get to Kill Devil Hills, which I'm wearing a Kill Devil Hills Fire Department shirt today now. I just happened to meet those guys and get a shirt. Anyway. <laughs> Searching for greener pastures. Melvin Warren, chief watchman. This is the painting with Melvin Warren. Look right here. See right here? There's the plaque, Melvin Warren. That the painting you just saw before this wasn't that painting. Dave put them in the, the slideshow. They were out of order. But this is the past. This is this is it. He's with his sheep dog. He's leading sheep through the desert. And I said, You really want me to take my stuff to the desert? And that is Big Bend right there in the painting where the Lord told me I would be going. I said, you want me to go to Big Ben and take my thing, my job zone, and my wind blades. And then there's wind blades, and the Lord says, go in that store right there, go in that building. And I am like, go in that building? Go in that building. And I walk right in, and there's the painting with the shepherd leading sheep, and it says, searching for greener pastures, Melvin Warren, which means chief watchman, and I'm the chief watchman for this generation. It's probably nothing. Don't even... Clax the false prophet! No. You have made the grievous, most grievous error of your life. Okay, there it is. Look at it. Look at what you're looking at. Look at what you're looking at. That is impossible. So I'll play the slideshow just a little more. And then we'll get to it. Let's see. Uh, I'm just going to... I'm going to go through this and just see what's in here real quick. Because uh, I don't want to play the whole thing. I mean, there's a lot of stuff here. I'm just going to play a couple more seconds of this, and we're going to move on. Okay, now, 
I have proven everything I've told you. I documented it all. I proved everything I gave you. Everything I've given you a testimony about, I proved using all documentation. Just like a court of law. It's all been true. All of it. Okay, now let's see where I'm at on this one. Okay, now I'm going to show you Chinati. I'm going to show you, remember, the miracles that happened in Chinati. I'm going to show you what, so I showed you what got me to Chinati. The Lord walked me in that art gallery and said, Chief Watchman, and it was out in Big Ben. And I said, I got to go now. Got to. On faith, now I have to go. I asked and he showed me. I got to go. So I did what he said. I packed up my parachute. I packed up my motorcycle. I drove out to the desert. I, I went to Chinati. And uh, then the Lord took me on a little hike down a, a, a canyon to show me where my LZ would be. Of course, I thought I was the one that was going to figure it out. But he's always the one that figures it out, especially here in Kill Double Hills. Because I thought I was maybe doing one thing, but I did something else. And it all turned out so supernatural, it confirmed my entire ministry from beginning to end. Because this is the end. Okay. Okay, here we go. Okay, so this is the canyon in Chinati. And this is where, I want you all to look at how many rocks are in this canyon. I just want you to look. Just look at the rocks that I'm walking on. Imagine, you know, the little two rocks that I showed you that I found in that canyon. When the Lord stopped, I literally walked and just stopped. And I looked down and I heard the Lord say, pick up those two rocks. I was like, what? Pick up what? Pick up those two rocks, those two black rocks. And they, you know, they were, I don't know, about this far apart. And the Lord said, pick them up. Now put them together. Now don't forget, I'm the guy that was showing everybody what the Bible means why, when it says, upon this rock, I will found my church. That is my job, to show you what it is to be on the rock. If you're not on the rock, you are not in Jesus' church. Matthew 16, upon this rock, I will found my church church this is the rock knowing this truth there is a right side up you and there is an upside down you and unless you invert the other one the one that's upside down and you kill the demon inside you are not converted you can think you are but this is what being on the rock is knowing this that's why peter represents the one that's down jesus represents the one that's up Peter is this mirror reflection upside down. And to get converted, you turn the other one up and the two become one. That's what being on the rock is. And he used a physical manifestation in a riverbed with trillions upon trillions upon trillions upon trillions of rocks. And the one rock that was in that riverbed that was split directly down the middle and happens to be in the same shape as the serpent's head of the Vatican. The Lord God made sure I found it. I wonder what the odds are on that. It's like, <gasps> okay, now take a deep breath. Now I'm in Kill Devil Hills and the testimony I'm going to give you here is going to blow your mind. Now, if that doesn't, what you're watching, if what I've shown you hasn't blown your mind yet, then you're definitely in the wrong place or you need to put the weed down because, uh, yeah, this is beyond the pale, guys. Okay, here we go. Now I'm just going to, now that I, okay, let me just take a minute. I've been feeling a certain level of stress because I know I need to get this to you. I know it's the end of the world. I know it's coming. And I feel this enormous burden because I still have more of this trip to go on. And I haven't even gotten to the testimony of Kill Devil Hills here yet. I'm getting it ready by doing all this. Okay, so let me just... <laughs> That's my spirit groaning. <laughs> you know, the Bible says our spirit groans within us. That was my spiritual groan. <laughs> so here we go. All right, let's do it. Okay, let me turn this off so you can hear this. To beat me down here as a dog, within literally about three feet of me, I could jump over and grab him if I wanted to. So. 
this area right in here looks like the potential enter into the gauntlet, which is it's so unforgiving. Once you commit to this, you, there's no going back. And so the day of the jump, I'll be uh, I'll be coming down here and setting up this this LZ. I'll set up the tarp and the wind blades in the morning. What's so fascinating? I I had no idea. I don't remember what the wind blades say, uh, other than the two from Grand Junction that say V for vengeance. <clears throat> but I heard the Lord tell me take the other two, which I didn't remember what they were to be honest. He told me take the other two and put them down in the creek bed with this big blue tarp with the big red X on it. <clears throat> and I looked at those wind blades uh, a little while ago while I was checking my equipment, and uh, it says Psalm uh, forty-six ten. Be still and know that I am God. I'll be exalted among the nations. Wow, I will be exalted in the earth. So yesterday, this is where the Lord showed me to uh, to drop down into this canyon. Um, that'll be my marker, that tree right there. That's a cottonwood tree. And it stands all by itself here. And so, I'll use that as my reference point to commit to this canyon. And then I'll do a quick panoramic so y'all can see there's just no forgiveness uh, on a canopy that's entered in here. And uh, once you commit to this, it's fully committed. There's, there's no way out. <laughs> it's just absolutely a hardcore jump. This is a hard, hardcore jump. The gauntlet. <laughs> I'll enter the gauntlet up there. And uh, I'll probably do what's called a hook turn. I'll do a left-handed hook turn right at that tree. And then I will hit my dive loops and I will bleed off a lot of altitude with my dive loops. And then I'll pop my dive loops right about at the edge of that cliff and then I'll let it fly straight right here. And this is the widest part. This is where I'll set up the X. And uh, I don't have to worry about running out of runway. There's plenty of room right there. So this looks like the Lord put me right where he wants me. This is just so phenomenal. I'm so grateful to get to do all this. Blades. Okay, now, uh, so we don't have to watch 36 minutes of me setting up an LZ. The Lord told me exactly, I want you to put it right here. When I was started rolling that thing out, I heard the Lord say, right here. And I was like, okay, right here. So I want you to look at this LZ. Well, look at this. You see how it's all clean? See that? When I, when I, when I left the next day, when I left to go make that jump, I had to drive an hour away from what you're looking at. I had to drive an hour through the desert, go to a little airstrip, meet an airplane that flew in, walk to the plane, we fly off, we fly over this canyon, I have to locate the canyon, I have to locate my LZ, and I have to jump in extremely treacherous conditions. And I made it into that, I missed the tarp by about 30 feet, maybe about about maybe 30 yards about 30 yards i can see where I, um i see where i hit right back there on the left anyway so but when i left there was a massive thunderstorm and that canyon flash flooded when i left the the few people that were there they thought oh my god he's going to jump into a raging river and he's going to die but by the time I jumped, it had already pushed through and I landed. It was all soft and it wasn't soaking wet. My camera went dead in the plane. Uh, but Cade, the pilot, he got a video of me going out the door. And uh, the guy, there was a guy there that had a little drone, but he I don't I don't know what happened with our with uh, the drone footage. Anyway, but here we go. So you see this LZ? Look how clean the, that red X that red X is. After I jumped over on this side over here, 
on this side right here where my picture is, there was, you can see there's no water running here. There's no water running anywhere. After I set up the LZ, the Lord told me, go read Isaiah 25 and Isaiah 43. And it says, I will make streams out of dry ground. I will make like a way in the desert. I was like, and then after I jump, there's a clear stream running through this thing. And the one side of that tarp that's perfectly clean has a clear stream. Are you joking? Let me show it to you. I told you everything I told you I'm going to prove. Prove it. These are miracles. This is the Lord God orchestrating a message, an end time message through his servant. So I can tell the world, y'all were warned. I warned you about the fire that's coming. And if you didn't heed the warning, then you're going to have to deal with what's coming. The end of the world is here. The beast is about to be unleashed. The mark of the beast is here. They're going to, Satan is taking over the host body system. It's a spiritual takeover of the host body system. They're double downers now. The serpent race has taken over and they're wiping out all the sheep. That's what COVID-19 is, Abaddon sheep slaughter. They're using it as a springboard to get the whole thing going. That's what it all is. Okay, here we go. right there so the day of the jump I'll have that all set up and then I'll jump in my vehicle and I'll go to meet the plane and we'll load up we'll get to altitude somewhere up there and then good God only knows what's going to happen so praise God I'm just here I'm, I'm available to do what he asks so now I've got an LZ set up and I know what I'm doing glory to God just kind of Okay, so let's move on to the next video. Let's do this next one. Let's. Okay, so this is me just showing you. Ch this is me. I'm just going to show you Chinati. It's like the little oasis. It's like a little. It, so see, this is the way the good Lord revealed to me Parthenogenesis. I'm in a little situation like the Garden of Eden in the desert. There's a female whip lizard about this big just cruising around my cabin. I find out my cabin was made out of raw stones, just like the Bible says. You are all being built up into a holy temple for God. Y'all all being built up as living stones. The word is lithos into a holy temple for God to occupy. See, each one of us is a living stone that builds part of the temple. Each one of us and God occupies us. We're the third temple. You think there's a building? Yeah, yeah, there's no building. We're the building. We're all being built up as living stones into a holy temple for God to occupy. That's why the little building that I'm in in Chinati was made out of stones. And then there's a big whiptail lizard female going around it. Whiptail lizards can self-fertilize. A female can self-fertilize. Another female, they can lay a clutch of eggs and those eggs can transmute into from female to male transgender where do you think all this transgender stuff comes from it's a reptilian race and that's the way the lord god uh conveyed it to me he took me to chinati he put me in a garden of eden type setting uh, the little garden of eden in the desert he made us sure a big female whip -tail lizard was going around my cabin he made sure 1937 was written in the cement right there 1937 in the bible means lust and desire which what god's angels did they lusted and desired the daughters of men. It was a serpent race that set a, uh, a trap for them. It's like, oh, we can occupy those host bodies. You're not supposed to do that. Exodus says, neither shall you, you shall have no other gods before me, and thou shalt not make unto thyself any graven image. The word graven image is idol or any likeness of anything in the heaven, the earth, the water under the earth. The word likeness means embodiment no embodiment if you get in a body then that's what the enemy wanted we got you now now you got a demon in there with you and you're going to self cannibalize and you're going to be up down and you're going to go to the pit if you die like that unless you get converted and you get two ups and then you get you come together as one the mystery of everything is solved guys everything <laughs>
I was going to make a really rude statement about Hillary Clinton, but I won't. <laughs> okay, here we go. Sorry, little Isis. On my little door post when I walk in the door, it says 1937. Clinton does on all this super significant stuff. All right, this is the day. This is it. I watched the sunrise this morning. It's been, it's so supernatural. I just don't even have words, guys. I just don't. The people that came and helped me set up, uh, a young man, young man named Hartzell. Uh, he, uh, he was about 12 years old. Him and his dad um, and his mom came and helped me roll this out. Hartzell, H-A-R-T-S-E-L, uh, I think. Hartzell, Hartzell stood right in the center of the X as a drone flew over top to get footage. I'm sure the name Hartzell is going to be extremely significant. I don't know what it is yet, but I'm sure it's going to be profound. Anyway, but the LZ set up. I got little flags everywhere, little caution flags on the plants, wind directionals. Um, the jump is at approximately 7 o'clock. Um, well, 7.15 to 7.30, I'll be at altitude, and this is, this is my LZ right here, and, uh, there it is, Psalm 46, 10, be still and know that I am God, I will be exalted among the nations, I'll be exalted in the earth, and I just don't know, I mean, I'm just doing what I've been told to do. So I'll do this one little video, the last little video. I'll get myself in the dead center of the X. Bam. I'm on it. There it is. I'm here as instructed. Uh, the girl that was here, Izzy, uh, she said, you know, Jonathan, I had this f feeling that a while back we were coming here and out of nowhere came this storm that just rocked. She said their car was being picked up and set back down on the ground from a storm here in the mountains that came out of nowhere. I was just like, how weird she's telling me this right now. Anyway, the next video will be from the, uh, from the air. So here it is. So as I was walking, I heard the Lord say, look down and I looked down and I, I put these back down, but I looked down and I saw these two rocks. I looked down. I mean, I heard the Lord say, look down. And I looked down and I heard the Lord say, pick up these two rocks. And I picked them up. And this is unbelievable. I mean, you got to be kidding me. Two rocks out of all these rocks rocks <laughs> they were split these this rock was two separate rocks sitting on the ground in a river bed with trillions of rocks and I heard the Lord say look down and my spirit and then I saw these and I heard the Lord say pick up those two rocks I just burst into tears I didn't know what else to do how in the world It's a rock that's, I'm going to put it exact, there we go. Look. <laughs> that's insane. <laughs> Glory to God. So here's another interesting thing the Lord had me do was, I see the straight line going in the middle, making like, looks like a V coming to a straight line.
Okay, sorry. <laughs> I'm like, oh, no, Clark, you forgot the Maya. I was like, okay, sorry. Do you know how insane all this is? Do you, do you know how insane this is? There's no water in that riverbed. Look, let me show you something. Do you see any water right here? There's no water. After I make the jump, there's a clear running stream. Hang on one sec. Okay, so I wanna I wanna show you something because I told you after I I went to set up the LZ the first time to roll it out to practice. I had to set it up once as a just roll it out, practice it. That's when uh, the Lord had me find those rocks. Um, or no, maybe that was I don't remember what I. It's when he told me to go back and check on the LZ. But then he sent me to my room after I set it up. I went to my room. And he told me, read Isaiah 25 and Isaiah 43. Watch this. Thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, that formed thee, O Israel. Fear not, I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. Yahweh, my name is Yahweh, has given a messenger that rings the bell and gathers the church. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. When the, and through the rivers, thou shalt not overflow thee. By the way, I've shown you what all this means. It's supernatural. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. I'm the before the fire guy, by the way. Before the fire. Neither shall the fire kindle upon thee. For I'm the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Seba for thee. Since thou wast precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable. I have loved thee. Therefore, I will give men for thee and people for thy life. Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east and gather thee from the west. Sorry, here, watch. Hang on one second. Bring forth the blind people that have eyes and the deaf that have ears. Let all nations be gathered together and let the people be assembled who among them can declare this and show us former things. Let them bring forth their witnesses that they may be justified or let them hear and say it is truth. You are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be any after me. I, even I, am the Lord. Besides me there is no Savior. I have declared, I have saved, and I have showed there was... When there was no strange God among you, therefore you are my witnesses, saith the Lord, that I am God. Now watch. Watch this. Let's see. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Right there. That was part of the scripture I read. And, and it says, And the beasts of the field shall honor me, and the dragons and the owls, because I give waters in the wilderness and rivers in the deserts to give drink to my people, my chosen. Now listen. If you're me, and you skydived into a, a desolate desert canyon, and it had a clear running stream on one side of it, on that LZ that's a big red X and the dirty side one half of the LZ is perfectly clean the one with the clear running stream because that represents the Lord washing us cleaning his people the other side represents the serpent race and this is unbelievable guys I'm just like, I forgot all this stuff how, how profound it was so here we go let's keep going watch okay let me see where we're at Okay, here we go. I even I even documented the Bible in my room right here. Let's see. Okay, here we go. Here is the day of the jump. So heading over to the plane. We're getting ready to go. Just quick check in. Three sixty. Yeah, Ooh. it's been fun. Let's do it again. <laughs> All right, there's a super. Look at that. What a so heading over to the plane. We're getting ready to go. Just quick check in. Three sixty. <laughs>
Yeah, Woo. it's been fun. Let's do it again. <laughs> All right, there's a super, look at that. What a cool Cessna. All right, guys, uh, let me send this to Dave. Okay, so here, here is uh, a video made. My 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 gear quit working in the plane. Here is Cade the pilot. He got he got my exit. I've uh, and he's got my parachute under canopy. I want you just to, when you watch this, I want you to look at my little teeny white canopy. I jump a very small canopy. It's very small, very fast. And I want you to look at that little white canopy, what I was jumping into. I mean, most people would say you're totally insane. And I, you know, they may have something there. But when you trust the Lord and you know the Lord's with you, I mean, I've never flown over that area. I mean, flying over something you've never, ever, ever jumped and the first jump you're going to do is it's do or die. You either make it or you die, probably. Or you severely get injured. Okay, here we go. So there's the canyon. So I want you to look right down here. See the little white dot? Watch this. Let me enlarge it. Okay, let's see. Right. Uh oh. Right here. See the little white dot? Follow this dot right here. Ready? Don't you find it really wild what's on my cabin? Do you see the star? I mean, I know we're in Texas and all, but the other cabins didn't have a star that I saw. Maybe one of them, but I, I don't remember seeing one on another cabin. They had other things. Okay, here we go. Let's watch this. Spiritual representation of the whole thing is just staggering. It's, it's not almost believable. With the Royal Enfield motorcycle, Royal Enfield, like we are the Royal Enfield. We're like Zion, the Royal Enfield. Everything else is out. Okay, I just, I realized, right, I, I, I didn't realize this until right now. I'm sitting there talking about the motorcycle represents the Royal Enfield because we are the Royal Enfield. We are from, from Zion. We went out. We went out. The Bible says, I am the door. My sheep can go out and find pasture. And I call my own sheep by name. And they can come back in. Listen. I'm in a place called the Outer Banks. I just realized it right now. See, Outer Banks. It's called OBX. OB, OB, Outer Banks. And they have an X, OBX. That's insane. I realized just now we're the Royal Enfield. And now, right now, I'm in the outer banks at Kill Devil Hills. That's just insane. Especially when you see what I'm going to show you. <laughs> Y'all are going to freak. Okay, here we go. Let's do that again. Just like this, considering all the other stuff that the Lord's had me do is just absolutely phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. 
and the spiritual representation of the whole thing is just staggering. It's it's not almost believable. With the Royal Enfield motorcycle, Royal Enfield, like we are the Royal Enfield, or like Zion, the Royal Enfield, everything else is out. So if you read Revelation 22, and that, you know, they're permitted to enter into the city like a Royal Enfield. There's a Royal Enfield bike, it's got a crown on it, it's a mirror reflection. There's 1937 right there on the ground, right there. Uh, like the flood, the commercial progressive uh, 1937 lesson desire in a little situation, right? A little Gordon Dean. It's just not even possible. It's so far beyond my brain. And then the two rocks that were separate, that were the same rock, split in half. And the Lord told me, put them back together. And then I came back to this room and I opened my Bible to Ephesians 2. He'll make one new man from the two possible a document I'm going to pick up the LZ which is way beyond that big tree um, but I, I want to document something I want y'all to look down for a sec look at all these look at, look at the rocks look at all these rocks this is nothing but rocks can you imagine out of all these rocks out of all of these rocks Picking, looking down and seeing two rocks that were black and hearing the Lord say, pick them up and picking them up. And what you picked up was a rock that had been split in half the size of a 50 cent piece. That's impossible. But it happened. How bizarre is this? I'm here to pick up the LZ. And look at this. One half is completely clean. The other half is completely dirty. And look, look at the dirt, how it's concentrated to the part of the one triangle. Like look, look at the triangle on that half. It's, it's, you can see the triangle, it's all dirt. And then right down the middle, straight in the middle of the X is a line and then the other half is clean. That's just crazy. <laughs> it's par for the course. <sighs> okay, now look. Straight down the middle. Look at that. In the dead center, right down the middle is where the water from, from a rain, I guess, that happened. Now let me show you this. On this side, that's all clean. The red triangle that's all clean, look. The stream is running now. Water is running. This water was not running. Past several days I've come down here, you'll see in the videos, there's no water running. I'll make streams in the desert. Pools out of dry ground, rivers out of dry ground. And it's running. It's literally running. It's moving. That's insane. I think this is absolutely insane. That half, that triangle's filthy dirty. The water came straight down the middle, literally in the very center of the X. But on this side where the red triangle's clean, this is where the stream is running now. The stream is literally running now. <laughs> this is mind boggling. Glory to God. Oh no. All right. Sorry, there's another glitch. Just, it's okay.
Okay. Okay, here we go. Here we go. So, I here's the thing. I've been I've been I've been going at it all day. It's already it's already 11:15. I've got to pack up and head out tomorrow. The Lord told me I need to get out of here. In order to give you a, an accurate testimony, let me show you what I, let me show you what we got to go through. Let me show you how much information I've got to go through. Let's see. Let me show you. Watch this. Okay, in order to uh, deliver the uh, the Kill Devil Hills, I have to go. I have to go through every one of these pictures. I have to talk about all these pictures. I have to give a testimony to all these different things you're looking at, what they mean, what there's a story behind all of it, and all the way through here, 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 all through all this stuff right here. I have to give a testimony, not just through here. It has to keep going. So he's still here at Kill Devil Hills. Here, 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 here. And all the way to here. To my little graduation picture when I... That's me graduating from kindergarten in Germany. When I was a little little tyke. And I have to do that many pictures. So that's at least another two and a half hours of video. It's it's 11.17 right now. 11.16. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just hold off. And when I get to my place to stop tomorrow, I'll set up and I'll give you the Kill Devil Hills end of the world testimony. The end of the world's here. Y'all should let all this sink in. Let all this sink in for a day. Let it sink in. Try and imagine what you just saw. And then tomorrow I'll... Okay. Did you hear in the in the video when I walked into the the cabin in Chinati? When I walked into the cabin in Chinati, I opened the Bible and it opened up to Ephesians two, and I had the two pieces of rock, the two become one. <laughs> like, ah! All glory to God. All right, guys, I love you in Christ. I'm gonna I'll finish this off tomorrow. This is part one of the Kill Devil Hills video. But now you have all the proof that everything I told you about the other events. And this is just, there's so many other miracles, it's a joke. It's, I mean, you know, on air, Amy's ice cream, uh, this is it. There's so many, I can't keep track of them all. All glory to God. Comes with the price, though. That's for sure. All right, I'll pay the price, though. Amen. All right, guys, love you in Christ. I'll see you guys tomorrow. All right.